What's up guys and gals and a merry hi do to all of you. It is another episode of Mountain Blade Warband. In the last episode, we had done some serious damage to Rodox. I think Rodox is between us, Vagir, Swadia, and everybody else that Rodox is really sort of stepping on the toes of. They made the mistake that the Nord Empire made where they pretty much picked too many battles and now they can't get out of them. So they're more or less marginalized right now. Our faction managed to take over... Let's see. Ah, Weya, which means that Cherise should be next. Unfortunately, the king or the sultan hasn't sent me any notification when he goes on campaign. I would have liked to have been part of all that, but it is what it is. Today, we are going to do an arena battle. We're going to see how long we can last. So the point of the arena is they put you in there and you fight for as long as you possibly can in the odd hope that you'll make a little bit of cash. This isn't really a great way to make money, but I wanted to show you guys just so you know what it does. Let's join the arena, and it's given us the staff. And it looks like we're up against a large amount of enemies. I'm just going to try and swing on some of these guys. I would prefer to switch weapons if I could get away with it. But I don't think I'm going to be able to. Oh god, there's somebody with a bow, so yeah, we need to get ourselves a shield, like, right now. Now, basically how this works is the more dudes we knock out, the more money we make. And I think it goes up to 40 people or something like that. I really hope this guy with the bow does not, like, ace me. If you can time it right, you can get him to shoot up in the air like an idiot and totally miss. We do really, really, really want to dogpile anybody with a bow. I was hoping there would be more shields on the field. Ooh. Heard it whistle. Now the nice thing about the guys with bows is that they really can't do anything to you once you close the gap with them. I'm not very good with two-handed weapons. If you're wondering why I swapped over to two-handed weapons, it's because you can get skill while you're in here. And I really just sort of wanted to level things up a bit. Plus the reach can be nice. Once you get on the edge of the arena, so what I mean by that is once you've defeated everybody, it only spawns one guy at a time. So really, in order to do well in the arena, all you've really got to do is kill people fast enough so that they don't spawn as fast as you're whacking them. So basically you're playing whack a douche here. Down goes that guy, and then you're also hoping that too many people with bows don't spawn. Because they sit in the back and they just kind of snipe you, which is annoying. Annoying as hell, actually. Oh god. Took a little bit of damage. We are in the nude after all. Ah, there's the first guy with a shield. So this is the dude that we really want to scoot and loot here. There it is. So let's as soon as he hits the ground, we're gonna try and pick him clean. There it is. That's what I wanted. And so now what you really want to do is you want to stack up as many shields as you can so that if they accidentally come up with a bunch of bow guys back to back to back you don't end up totally and completely screwed I would like to swap that quarter staff for another shield oh and who is shooting me oh this guy bitch you are not manly enough for that and you sir you sir that was not a noble move either and they're swinging through each other again I hate that bug so much if you saw the guy with the ridiculous kettle hat hair swung through the guy in front of him. It's one of those things that never got fixed in this game and that to this day still drives me crazy. I hated it in Mountain Blade 1, I hate it in Mountain Blade 2. Two-handed weapons can swing through other people, which is just like, damn it. So, we lost that arena fight. I think we got paid like something. We killed a bunch of people. I think you get like 25 dinars. It's not even worth the effort. I just wanted to show off the arena a little bit. Now then, we've taken Weya which appears to actually be attacked by numerous foes now. How many enemies do we have here? King Gravith. Okay, so he's going to jump in on this fight. I don't want any part of that. Nope, not at all. King Gravith would completely and totally toss our salad as it stands. It would be like a really, really nasty pizza place. You know, where they have those disgusting salads that they give you right before... Oh, Gulison. Okay, so we do have to go meet up with the Marshal finally. They're probably going to try and take... Dashbiga? Where is Dashbiga? That is way out there. I guess I'll head that direction, but... I don't like it when it sends the call for the... I really wish that it just pinged them on the map at all times if you had this quest, because sometimes it is impossible to find them. It is downright just not going to happen. We'll ride out in that direction, though, and we'll sort of hope that we run into him along the way. 
I mean, we can sort of pray that he's going westerly. Oh, there he is right there, so we did luck out. But if he was going towards Vagirs, it would have been a problem, or if he was going towards the Kurgeats, it would have been an issue. We are ready to join up, so let's make some friends, let's jump into the line, and I love this part because this is the part where I get to be really, really lazy and just click a company and things happen. So there it is, we're going to follow him around until something crazy happens. More than likely what's going to occur is we're going to run into King Gravis' ridiculous Zerg Ball, it's going to break up this whole thing, we're going to quit the campaign, they're going to run off crying, and that's going to be that. At least that seems to be how it's been going recently. I am, however, really, really hoping that we decide to take Cherise back. That's one of those predicaments that we found ourselves in, oh, about two or three weeks ago, that we've never been able to remedy. We've been sitting around waiting to get it back, and I haven't seen the campaign editor, I'm sorry, I haven't seen the campaign AI really make any sort of attempt at taking what is ours. Are we at war with Vagirs right now? Hold on, faction reports here, let me take a look. No, we're only at war with what appears to be... Rodox at the moment, okay. And you'll forgive me, I was swatting at my cat. Right now he's playing with a string cheese wrapper. It's making all kinds of noise and it's driving me crazy out of the left side of my ear. There we go. He wants us to do Qualiut, Rushdie, and Tilim Sal. Which are gonna be Rushdi, Qualiut, and there it is. Okay, so those are the three. Let's go have a look-see. Oh, never mind. See, they ended... It's ridiculous. Like, I don't get why they keep breaking off their campaign. It's tremendously frustrating to me. It makes me sad as hell. Like, I really want us to make a push, but I need the whole campaign on my side, and I really am sometimes just disgusted by the stupidity that the AI shows. It's just like, we could take stuff right now, and then if they would hold it better too, we'd just be all right. But unfortunately, they're not very good at holding it. They're like me in the third grade. It's just, it is what it is. We've made peace with Rodox, which means we now find ourselves in the unenviable position of having nothing to do again. Bunch of bandits running around down here. I think what I'll do then in the lull, I don't know who we're going to go to war with. But I think what I'd like to do then is we're going to go up and fight with some Sea Raiders for a minute. Maybe see if we can do that quest to wipe out Sea Raiders. Just do whatever we can to make things better for ourselves. We are waiting for our mill to be built. That said that it had 40 days going. There's going to be a feast in Halmar. I don't really care. I'm not trying to make friends in this faction right now anyways. I'm sort of bored with the Serenid Sultanate. Not impressed with the way they're conducting their business. Go ahead and we're just going to charge at some of these bandits. We're going to get our business done. We get slaughter either way. We're going to murder and pillage and plunder no matter what happens. I may also consider messing with the Kurgeats a little bit and seeing if maybe I can take some of their outlying castles. I don't know if they're going to have something minimally defended, but given how they've been looking recently, my suspicion is that they probably don't have a whole lot of units to go around. And i got to hold my breath. You guys remember, i got to hold my breath to swing properly, otherwise I just can't kill anything. Jump over that melee right there. It looks like everybody's bogged down, so I suppose firing arrows at some of these idiots out on the outer rim might work. Nope. Vetoed. You're not allowed to do that. I always thought it would be funny if the word veto had like a really hilarious... Well, not like a hilarious, but like a ridiculously violent origin like back in the day being vetoed meant they like cut your like big toe in half or something and that's how they stopped you from doing like a really dumb idea and then we just kind of took it and ran with it and now we just call it a veto whenever you cancel something you're like eh, I veto it we lost a lancer how did we lose a lancer it's ridiculous it's ridiculous sometimes my troops make me sad I'm not gonna loot anything from there let's just head up to Rivacheg and we'll see if we can get the quest to wipe out the sea raider landing I don't know if the Lord's going to be around the castle at all. He might be. Urumuda is definitely not who we're looking for. Maybe there'll be a ransom broker. Let's go to the tavern. There's Deshavi and some hired blades and Artemenor. Hey, Artemenor. So Artemenor's now back. That's good. At least we found part of our party. I'm going to hire some Hired Blades because we haven't done it yet in this playthrough. Yeah, I've had entire forces of Hired Blades before. I actually like them a lot. As you may have guessed, given how much I bring them up every time I see them. Oh god, we are in the wrong position right now. This war just went horribly wrong for us. So we are behind enemy lines doing business, and unfortunately... Oh, the Swadians took... Oh, the Swadians took tears, so maybe we won't lose money on this. 
It's it would be okay if we did lose money simply because we're sitting on wads and wads of cash right now. Is it still a wad? I don't think you can wad coins. We're sitting on clinks of coins. I don't know. I don't even know what to call like a huge amount of coins. Like a wad makes sense because you've got the cash and then you like wad it up. But a ton of coins? Eh, I don't know. A clattering? There we go. A clattering of coins because they make lots of jingle. A jingle of coins. Ah, there it is. A jingle of coins. We're sitting on a jingle of coins right now. I like that one the best because it's got the ingle in it. It's got the ingle. Everybody loves ingles. I suppose we will head towards tier then in the interest of finding ourselves a random broker so that we can start this battle off properly. We can also get in here and fight with some of these dudes that we randomly see rolling around. They've got a lot of ground to cover. And one of the benefits of that is we can find lots of these little isolated dudes that have nowhere to go. And also lots of castles that have been sort of a 435? Oh my god, King Yuraglek is banging it out right now. He's just being a terrifying dude. We will fight you to the end. We will drink from your skull. I don't know why, but that's still just my favorite voiceover in this entire game. It's just so picture perfect. He's saying what he's going to do with your skull. Not only is he going to remove it from your shoulders, but he's also saying how he's going to apply it. And like any good hunter, even when you're hunting humans, you gotta make sure you use every part of the human. I learned that from the predator. Let's get ourselves some horsemen here. And I'd prefer to keep myself from getting bowled over. God, look at the amount of cavalry we're fielding. I am so proud of my cavalry right now. I'm feeling good about it. I'm feeling very Prussian at the moment. Prussians use lots of cavalry, right? I was trying to do like a historical reference, but you know, whatever. They should line up for the charge very, very shortly, and exactly what's going to happen is what you think is going to happen. We're going to crash into the side of them the moment it occurs. So the second they let go, they are throwing things at me, though. I wish that was more rare, but it seems to be people's main reaction to me as a person. Throw things at him! That guy was already bald, and then I cut his head off. Talk about having a bad week. Maybe he shaved his head bald. Maybe he's not bald. Maybe he's bald by choice. He's not involuntarily bald. Wow, that went flawlessly. I couldn't have asked for a better battle. We pretty much kicked the pants off that one. We didn't lose anybody, and he lost everybody. That's the type of battle that I like to engage in. I lose nothing, and you lose everything. What's this game called? This game is called I Win. <laughs> Ooh, if we can run down Boyar Plice. Come on, Plice. I know you don't like me from the past, back when I was fighting you with Nords. We've got a long history. Me and Plicey, we haven't gotten along for a long, long time. Our wages are pretty high. Sargoth is sequestered, but we're still getting money from Tyr, so it could be a lot worse. We're down 300. That's okay. We're making money, so who cares? Because they have so much territory too, what you'll notice is that Vagir should be running a ton of caravans around, so we should be able to just pillage and plunder indiscriminately. Well, sort of discriminately. We are discriminating specifically for Vagirs, I guess. So indiscriminately may not work, but we can loot and pillage with reckless abandon. There. I'll simplify the statement a tad. I'll make it, I'll take it down a notch with regards to the specificity of the argument. Forest banditos. I'm going to try and get rid of some of these bandits before anything. Actually, let's just cut them loose. I don't see any reason to be carrying... They're worth 100 apiece, but whatever. I need to get into battle. I want to fight with Vigors right now. They're one of my favorite armies to fight, simply because they're so well-rounded. Well, it sounds like there's problems up here. God, Nords. Poor Nords. Nords just needs to do something. I mean... They surprised me down here with the Kurgids, so if the Kurgids can recover, I wouldn't doubt that maybe Nords can recover too. And I always do this, I zoom out and then I forget where my units are. There they are. You gotta wait for it to auto-pan back, unfortunately. Let's maybe come down here and take a look at Senna's Gouda, look at some of these little castles down here. See if any of them are worth the effort. 149, 74 Swati and Sharpshooter, so no, that one is definitely not gonna be worth the time. That one's gonna be paid for in blood if we ever decide to take it. Do we even have any... Oh, we have just this little tiny border with Vagirs. I was worried that... It's weird that Vagirs declared war on us because we really don't have that large of a border with them. We ran him down in time, so let's jump in with Stamar, knock him out really quick. I should have probably upgraded my units, but... Oh, it didn't spawn like any cavalry on this go. So I guess we'll just hang out right here. 
It's weird. Sometimes I don't know how the game decides what to spawn. Like, I know it takes the order of your list into account, but sometimes you just don't get enough cavalry, and sometimes you get way too much. I'll bring the cavalry over here with me. So that they aren't clogging up the toilet of battle here. The toilet of battle. <laughs> I was trying to come up with something funny to say about that, but I think the toilet of battle just sort of stands on its own two feet. Or on its own one mount. You would not believe. You know the first episode of Mount Blade... I'm sorry, the first episode of Project Zomboid where I said I was going to drink out of the toilet and I was drinking out of the bowl? You would not believe the amount of mail I get about that to this day. I recorded that like six months ago and I still almost get daily somebody being like, You drink out of the back of the tank, jackass. Like getting all offended about it. It's the funniest thing on earth. I didn't even mean to troll that. Like I was just trying to be funny by drinking out of the bowl. But, or I was just trying to be crude by <laughs> drinking out of the bowl. But in any case, that really seems to have twisted the nipples on a lot of people. No, forget this noise. Let's end this quickly. Everyone, ride with me. Kind of sound like that voice right there. Kind of sounds like the alligator from Robin Hood, the Disney movie. And now, the challengers. <laughs> I don't know why that came to mind. I haven't watched that movie in forever, but for some reason I remembered that just now. No, we're not doing that, Boyar Stamar. We are not doing that. I did go through, and Behester leveled up, so I leveled up his... In between episodes, I leveled up his surgery up to level 5, so hopefully we'll see a major difference in the amount of units we lose in between battles. I am really, really hoping that going from level 3 surgery to level 5 will make a big old difference. It's only an 8% difference. Like, we've got a 20% chance, though. One in five of my units, when taken out, will not be fatal, so that's good. Three men wounded. He got away. Doesn't really matter. The point of the battle is really just to thin their forces at this point, because these little 40-man armies aren't so bad on their own, but when they finally amass as part of the campaign trail, when you've got like 25 of them, it turns out to be like a thousand troops in a stack, it becomes a major, major issue. And one which gives me pause because I'm completely and totally out of tissues. I don't see any other... There's Yeraglek again. Yeraglek is bound. I bet between me and Harlaus, we could probably take him. What does he have? Let's take a look. Let's quantify. I like numbers. He's got 33 knights. That's pretty ugly. 84 marksmen. <laughs> Getting a little uglier. 52 guards. Yeah, okay, he's kind of scary. He's definitely sitting at a point where he is a major threat to anyone who goes up against him. To the point where his troop stack is almost indomitable at this point. What do they have here? 50 marksmen and 21 guards. I bet we could take that. I really bet, but Yuriglex right over here, so he'll reinforce it. I would almost promise. Let's go have a look at some of the stuff that Kurgis have. And see if maybe something of theirs. Malayurg is really, really undefended. We could take that pretty easily if we wanted to. Let's wait for them to disperse. And we're going to do a little bit of the shifty, shifty, looty, looty here. Are they going to come back? Let's wait till they go on the campaign trail. And once they vanish, we're going to try and ninja loot Malayurg to add it to Nara. I realize this isn't going to help our foreign relations much, but I want a castle of my own. I'm trying to fast track the progress of this playthrough. I should also do my upgrades before I do this because we're going to need as many people who can sink damage as possible before we go up the walls. There we go. Okay, so now we're sitting at 93. We almost doubled them. Let's go ahead and besiege the castle. Oh, we've got to do a siege tower? Well, that could be a problem. But we'll give it a go and we'll see what happens. The Kyrgyz are not happy with me. It doesn't matter because they've pretty much already lost the map. So who cares what they think? They're kind of just like that little guy. It's like, hey, don't bother me. And we're like, whatever, man. Your castle's mine. I didn't read how long it said it was going to take. I think it said three days. With one engineering, I could see it taking a little while to figure out how to build a siege tower. I couldn't build a siege tower. I'd be like, does this go over here? Or like, what's going on with this? The good thing is that we're larger than all their armies, too, so they're not going to reinforce. Their king might ride over here, though, which would create a major problem for us. Very shortly, this should pop in just a minute. I don't mean to make this episode sort of boring, but building siege towers takes a while. And one thing that I've come to learn about the Nerd Castle... Let's see here. I can't see because of all the notifications. There we go. We're going to lead an assault. 
We're pretty far out of range right now. I'm going to have my archers deploy right there. I'm going to have them follow me and them follow me. And we got to start pushing this thing. Hopefully we'll kill off a couple on the wall before we even get there. You'll notice that I've spread my archers out the best that I can, just to make sure that we aren't eating too many arrows. We are going to take casualties, though, and it looks like we're on the move. The world's slowest siege tower, unfortunately. Aimed way too high on that one. There it is. That's what I was looking for. Kind of want that guy on the wall right there. Got him. Or somebody else got him simultaneously. Once you've got somebody beat it in, it's always, oh my god, are you serious right now? So ridiculously aimbody. Oh well, I'll let my aimbots battle with their aimbots, and then aimbots will be aimbots, and I guess I'm going to hang back on this battle now because I don't want to lose, but we are going to take this castle. It's probably going to get taken right after we do this. The problem in so being is that there's a giant army of like 150 dudes waiting on us out there. So for now, I've really got to hope that my casualties aren't unsustainable. Got him. Right between the eyes. Is there anybody else? Oh god, there's a bunch over here. Okay. Let's put a couple on him. I was hoping I could make him fall off the wall, but please don't crossbow me. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. Woohoo. Got him. So one less crossbowman to deal with. One thing I do like about Sieges is it does force you to play a little bit at range. Ooh, we lost a Huskarl. I am disappoint. Let me try and kill this guy off right here. Because he's going to be in a prime position to just cause problems once we start going up that ladder. Down he goes, right underneath the armpit. The armpit seems like it would be a pain... It's a painful place to get a tattoo, so the armpit seems like it would be a painful place to get shot with an arrow as well. As soon as that ladder goes down, I'm trying to keep an eye on it. We're almost there. We'll send everybody up the walls. Our casualties thus far have not been nominal. So that's good. I think we've only lost like one dude at this point. So that is definitely going to work to our favor when we get into this nasty clash of shields up here. All right. Infantry go, cavalry go. You have to remember that they're all still divided into their groups from the battlefield, so even though your cavalry don't spawn with horses in these, you've still got to command the cavalry to do what they're going to do. Up the walls we go. My archers, though, should not be going up the wall. Why did it give that order? I don't want my archers up the wall. I want my archers to hang out down here. Well, it looks like they're all cleaned off. Whatever. It's clean. Let's not worry about it. Let's get in here and let's do some damage. I'm going to do my best to clean archers off the walls while we're here. And now we just wait for the levee to break. Sometimes if I have full health, I'll make the jump over to that little parapet right there and see if I can jump the wall and kind of save myself a little bit of time, but it doesn't always work the way you might want it to. Sometimes you miss, sometimes you fall. Such is life. Okay, and I'm still seeing arrows being fired from somewhere. Oh, it's over there. There's one little guy up on the tower. There's another one over there, too. Ooh. Alrighty, then. Let's get up to his little, I guess, reinforcement point. I don't remember if he was... There he is, right there. Down he goes. There's a couple... Remaining over there. Is he going to shoot at me? I really don't feel like getting shot right now. I hope he feels like getting shot, though, because that's exactly what's going to happen. Okay, and so we've taken our first castle. Congratulations, guys. I am really pleased with this. 
I wasn't expecting to win, but we did it. We lost 15 men, which is pretty substantial. That's a lot of losses, but we should be able to replenish ourselves from the captives, so that works out. We'll take the Rodox Sergeant. We'll definitely replace our Mamluks. Swadian man at arm we will also take. We did lose some bowmen, so I'll take the crossbowmen there. In fact, we'll just start from the top and we'll just sort of take everything. Skirmisher, I'm not so interested in the horsemen I do want. And then all these guys right here. Let's pan and scan through all this and we'll figure out what's worth the most. So there are some sergeants in there, some Mamluks. Sword sisters are worth a lot, as are Kurgi lancers. Horsemen, not so much. Not a lot of loot for taking this place. I'm going to request that the castle be given to us. And at which point, we've got to deal with all these little guys that are kind of panning around us. I'm going to break the episode off here, and a little time may pass. Hopefully we get this awarded to us, because we could definitely use the net revenues. I'll see you guys in the next episode. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle. While we took Malayur Castle, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care out there, everybody.